Hello, everyone, and welcome to another weekly Coyotes chat hosted by me on Easy Central Sports. Uh, the Coyotes played last night and lost to the Ottawa Senators 4-3 to in overtime, so they were able to salvage a point, um, but their three-game winning streak was snapped. Uh, they are off on Wednesday. They did not practice today. They have another day off um, Thursday before they play again Friday in Anaheim, so they'll get back on the ice Thursday before they make the trip to Southern California for their next game. Um, so let's get started with our first question. This question comes from Ryan, and he asks, ever since that 6-1 loss to the New York Islanders last Tuesday, the Coyotes have gone on to win their last three. Would you attribute that to the players only meeting called after that loss? And do you think the Coyotes will get off to a good start since they are returning home from that road trip? Yeah, um, I think that players only meeting definitely helped get the Coyotes on the right track. It's unusual to see a players only meeting that early in the season. We'll see them sparingly, especially in the middle of long losing streaks. Not usually after two, but ones that extend um, seven games like the Coyotes had last March. Um, but I think it was necessary, and I think that was just because this is a new group. This is a different team than the one. Um, that played last year, that played the year before and going to the Western Conference Finals, and I think it was appropriate for the leaders and the core members of this team to reintroduce the identity of this team, how the way this team has to play, and the results speak for themselves. It definitely seemed to help this group moving forward because um, the last four games since that meeting, they definitely have played more like the team that they need to moving forward, even in last night's loss to Ottawa. They look more like the Coyotes team of the past, and that's the way they're going to have to play. So I definitely think that meeting helped moving forward, and I think this return home will benefit them too. I think they learned a lot about themselves on that road trip. It's a hard schedule. It's nice for them to get that out of the way, and I think moving forward now when they're more consistently at home, that'll help them. Um, in the past few years, their road record is uh, their home record has has been pretty steady. So this should be a nice a nice change in the schedule for them. Our next question is from Amalek. Hey Sarah, do you think Keith Yan will be a Coyote by the end of the season? I also recall GM Don Maloney saying he received a very good offer for Yanda last year. Do you have any insight to that? I. My opinion on Yan is, is I do think he will stick around for the next few seasons. Obviously, he's in the middle of that five-year deal. He still has a few years left on it, and so I don't see them moving him if they do decide to do that, possibly until the end of his deal. I think right now he's just too valuable, and we've seen so far with the injuries on the blue line that having those more experienced players in the lineup is critical. Obviously, Derek Morris has an impact. Rusty Klesla has an impact. Um, but even the guys like Oliver Ekman Larson and Keith Yandel that are now, you know, in their second, third, fourth years in the league have that experience that's that's been really valuable. So I don't see them moving him this year. Mind you, all of that can change if an offer blows the Coyotes out of the water. And I think that was the type of offer that Don Maloney received at the draft that Emily is referring to. Um, as far as I know, it was a very bona fide um, player, high line skill player, but it just wasn't enough of a package uh, for the Coyotes to pull the trigger on that deal. And I think it's going to take a package like that that is centered around a high profile, um, either scoring winger or scoring center for the Coyotes to make that deal. They're not going to get rid of the handle for someone to fill in on a third line role. Um, he's just too valuable for, for the Coyotes. He's a, he's a two-time All-Star. Um, he still manages to find a way to have you know steady offensive numbers. And so for him to leave this team and the Coyotes to willingly part with you know what some would consider would be a franchise defenseman on other teams, the price is going to be very steep. And I don't see someone offering that to the Coyotes necessarily this year. And if they do, it'd probably be easier to accept that in the last year of his deal when he's looking for another long-term high-priced extension. Okay, next question from Gull. How are you today? Nice, nice start. How is Rusty Klesla after taking a cheap headshot from Bobby Ryan? Do you think the team will do anything to upgrade the left-wing position? 
Okay, to answer the first part of that question, um, Klesla was able to return to the game last night after he took a hit up high from Bobby Ryan. He was kind of fighting for a puck along the boards and was hit, looked maybe perhaps by an elbow. Uh, it was tough to get a replay at that point. The game was, was very, very frenetic going back and forth, so it was, it was tough to say. There was no penalty called on the play, actually. The Coyotes ended up getting tagged for a penalty because they were called for too many men as Klesla was stumbling off the ice. After the game, Tippett hadn't seen the hit. Um, Klesla seemed to be okay. He was able to return, like I mentioned, but there is obviously some worry because he just recently returned from a concussion and whiplash after taking that high hit in the preseason. So um, we'll continue, continue to monitor his, his status. As I said, the Coyotes are off on Wednesday. They'll be back on the ice Thursday, so we'll get more of a, an update then. But the fact that he's able to return is a good sign. Um, as far as upgrading the left wing position, I still think that's on the Coyotes' to-do list. Um, they're still, I think, looking for someone to really fill out that line with Martin Hansel and Redeem Verbata, um, someone who can you know, not only put the puck in the net, but be a playmaker for Verbata, um, much like Mike Ribeiro is, the, is a playmaker for whichever line he plays on. So I think that continues to be a priority. Um, we might not see something happen until the trade deadline. We might not see something happen at all, perhaps not until the offseason. But now that they feel solidified up the middle of the ice, finding a scoring left winger has to be priority number one for general manager Don Maloney. Next question is from Bob. Sarah, do you think the roster as it stands today could compete for a Stanley Cup? If not, what moves do you think should be made to get us there? That is a great question, Bob. I think the core of this team um, could compete for a Stanley Cup, but I still think it needs um, some complementary pieces to really take that next step. If, if you look at it, this team isn't too far dissimilar from the team that made it to the Western Conference Finals that was three wins away from making it to the Stanley Cup. Uh, I think they have the goaltending in place. I really do think Mike Smith has rebounded so far from his performance last season. We definitely have seen flashes of the MVP that he was two years ago. And, and although it's kind of been um, you know a mixed bag in some games, I do think overall he's been fairly consistent and, and you know one of the Coyotes' best players on most nights. I think the defense has, has been um, better. They obviously struggled at the start of that road trip, but I think that was because they were missing the veteran presence of Derek Norris, of Rusty Klesla. Now that they're you know back in the lineup or should be back in the lineup long term, we'll see how Morris's status is the rest of the week. Um, I think the mix on this blue line is really solid. You have the young offensive Mines and Yandel and Ekman Larson and the steady stay at home guys in Cluster and Morris, and you need that mix. You kind of need that, that blend. Up front, though, I think that's where they need the most help. They do need a scoring left winger. They just need a little bit more punch in their top six um, and a little bit more depth and experience in their bottom six. You know, when you look at these lines, um, some of these players, you know, might not be in these top six, top nine roles in other teams. And I think when you have those parts where you can put guys who other teams would take as their top six in your bottom six, I think that's a sign of a team that's ready to contend. And I don't think the Coyotes are there yet. But you never know who's going to have the surprise season and, and have a breakout performance. Look what Rob Klinkhammer has done the last two games with three goals. So um, those unsurprising, you know, heroes, unlikely guys um, could help a team. And it's always the hot hand, I think, that, that gets hot at the right time that makes run up the cup. So we'll see if that's the Coyotes this season. Our next question from John S. Sarah, is the NHL looking at the Ryan hit on Klesla from Tuesday night? Um, we haven't heard anything so far today. That doesn't mean that it, it won't happen. Obviously, the league looks at every hit. That is just the you know the nature of the beast nowadays with um, so much attention on concussions and headshots and player safety. So the league reviews everything, whether or not it elicited a suspension. We'll see. Um, obviously, Klesla, even though he went off, he was able to return, so that might play a factor in it. But as far as a hearing and any type of discipline, um, no word on yet from that on the league. So we'll stay pat and see if anything happens with that. Question from Rob. Who, in your opinion, is the Coyotes' biggest rival? This is kind of a fun question, and I think it kind of depends maybe on what time of the season it is. Early on, it really looked like L.A. was the team that 
um, you would call the Coyotes' biggest rival, especially after that preseason game when Klesla got hurt. Um, but just seeing the way the Coyotes played Detroit uh, last week, they just seem to bring out something in them, and those games are, are always fun to watch. This was a little bit more run and gun, a 4-2 game than we're usually used to seeing with the defensive shutdown between those two teams. But um, I'd also include maybe Chicago in that list. Um, they're not in their division, but you look at the playoff battle that this team had a few years ago and the suspensions and the hits and just the intensity. I really think the Coyotes look forward to the challenge and playing that team. So a lot of players might consider that a rival, but I think just based on proximity and how many times they play them, I would go with the Kings. Um, we have another question from Phoenix Coyotes Raven. Do you think you get will ever get to play with the Coyotes. I think we could see them at some point throughout the season, especially if there's injuries or the Coyotes are looking to shake up their fourth line mix. Um, he was recalled last week with Tim Kennedy, obviously. He never got to play and ended up actually being sent down as a paper move um, so that the Coyotes could move Rusty Klesla off injury reserve and back onto the 23-man roster. Obviously, with the signing of Jeff Halpern, um, they didn't have room for him, and Yip was sent back down. But um, he's a player that has NHL experience, is a big body, and I think if we see it get a little more feisty in the division games, um, we could see a player like that because he adds some size and strength on the wing, and that's really going to be valuable for the Coyotes as they get more heavy into their Western Conference schedule. Another another question from Phoenix Coyotes Raven. How do you think Halpern will fit into the fourth line? Do you believe he will move up as he gets more time with the team? I definitely think he'll get more responsibility as he eases his way into the lineup. He played his first game Tuesday against the Senators. That was the first game that he was eligible. And he really was in shape and ready to go because he played in Finland in the Finnish Elite League before coming over to the Coyotes. And, and he was strong there. He had his legs under him and his conditioning. And, he kind of showed last night what he would bring to the Coyotes. A good face-off guy. He won eight of nine draws. He played 8.30, and uh, a few of those minutes were spent on the PK. And that's kind of the role. They're looking at him to kind of fill the Boyd Gordon hole. I don't know if he's an exact replica of Boyd Gordon. Obviously, Boyd wore a lot of hats for the Coyotes and had a very valuable role. But I still think that Halpern can be valuable to this team. Um, he's also another you know, leadership voice in the room, perhaps. It's too too soon right now for him to kind of stake his claim on that role, but he was a captain with the Washington Capitals, and um, he's very experienced, so I think that could be a role that the Coyotes um, find value in, especially down the road as you get closer into a playoff hunt. Another question from Rob, what is your favorite building city to visit on the road? Uh, I really like going to Chicago. I think just as an original 16, um, the United Center is a great place to watch a game and to cover a game. The fans are fantastic. They are really engaged, and it just makes a fun atmosphere to watch. The anthem is particularly special, obviously. They stand and cheer throughout the whole anthem, and it just kind of really amps up the intensity and the energy, you know, right from the drop of the park. So that's got to be my favorite building to go cover a game in. Uh, another question from Phoenix Coyotes Raven, do you think we have a replacement for Gordon in our lineup and which player do you think that is? Um, I think really Gordon's contributions are going to be filled by committee. I think we're seeing Jeff Halpern picking up a little bit of the slack now that he's signed. I think we're seeing Rob Klinkhammer pick up a little bit of the slack since he's taken on a PK role. That was something he didn't do last year. And I think we're seeing Antoine Vermet pick up a lot of the face-off responsibility. Um, he's really expanded his two-way game so far this season. I think when the Coyotes acquired him at the trade deadline a few years ago, he was looked at as the skillful offensive center that, you know, could really lead an attack and an offense, and now he's had to be a little bit more multidimensional, being strong on his face offs and being a PKer, and really having a 200-foot game, so I think it's going to be by committee. I don't think it's a quite there yet. I still think a Boyd Gordon would help this team, especially when you look at what he's doing with the Oilers. He has four goals. He's playing on the power play for them. Obviously different teams elicit different needs, but um, his price tag was a little too steep for the Coyotes, but there's still value in those niche players that are on your third line that you know work in the gritty areas of the game and winning face-offs, blocking shots, and killing penalties. Um, another question, how do you think Schlemko is playing? He has had a couple of major errors that have cost us goals. Um, I think Schlemko's actually been better the last few games. Um, I know he was particularly uh, 
impress the coaching staff um, in Carolina on Sunday with his performance. I think it's tough for these players who are kind of on the bubble in and out of the lineup to find consistency in their game because not only are they not always in and out um, with the tempo and having to readjust to that, but it kind of messes with their mind a little bit. And, you know, they're wondering mentally, are they going to be in tonight? Are they not? What do they have to do? And so I think Shumko had a little bit of comfort knowing that he had a contract. Um, you know, they signed him, they want him, but that isn't enough to always be a regular. And so I think that he's going to be a player to watch to see how he evolves. Um, if he can try and win a spot, um, right now that spot as the sixth defenseman belongs to Michael Stone. And so that's kind of where the battle is on the blue line between Schlemko, David Rumblad, and Stone to see who can um, give their best to, to play with Rusty Klosla. And right now it's Stone, but I think Schlemko will find his time at some point during the season. Okay, we have a question from Hamad. Watching Turris last night, I wondered what exactly happened between him and the Coyotes that caused him to want to leave. Do you have any info on that? Um, you know, Terrace has talked about this not only after the trade that happened almost two years ago, um, but since then when he joined the Ottawa Centers, he just didn't feel like the system and the style of the team suited him. And for him to have success, he needed to be um, in a system that, you know, let him have more flexibility, let him play to his strengths, and he just didn't feel he had that here with the Coyotes. Obviously, the holdout, um, you know, that basically caused him to miss the first few months of that season um, was predicated by a contract. He wanted, you know, a contract with term and, and money that the Coyotes didn't want to offer. Um, but then once the contract was signed, I do think there was something else there, and it was the fact that he just didn't feel Dave Tippett's system flattered his game, and he wanted to be, um, you know, under a different coach with a different style. And the Coyotes finally accepted that request and made a trade, and now it seems like both sides have have parted and maybe for the best. Tourists have settled into Ottawa and Coyotes no longer have a disgruntled player and instead have David Rumblad, a promising defensive prospect who's on the roster now. And they were also able to use the pick they got in that trade to get Antoine Vermette and we're seeing the value that he has this season, not only on the offensive side of the puck, but also defensively. So, you know, in a weird way, maybe it worked out for everyone, but um, he just didn't feel like his game suited the game the Coyotes play. and. He wanted to go somewhere else where he thought it did. Next question from Brian Snyder. I am very impressed with 1936 and 50 line. Did Tip have any comments about the line? I thought they had the most energy of any line last night. This was a line that um, kind of got put together in that Carolina game after Clean Camera had the hot hand. And a lot of the tinkering that we've seen so far has been a result um, you know, of Tippett trying to get players engaged because they've been on the penalty kill so much. So he's had to scramble to make sure guys are getting regular shifts and getting back into the action. And Clean Camera is just a very opportunistic player. He had two goals Sunday. He was rewarded and got moved up the depth chart to play with Vermette and Doan. And he scored again last night. And so he's a player that just works hard, puts his work boots on, and that's tough to defend. He, he finds a way to pressure guys into turning pucks over, and, and he's good at creating time and space. And so that's a line that I don't know if they'll stick the whole season, but it's a line right now that Tippett likes because it works hard, and, and when he's opportunistic, it trickles to the players around him. And Donor Vermette are obviously two players you want going, and that's a pair that's been together in the playoffs. They've played together for some time now, and they've been impressive. We'll do one more question. Let's see. Do you see, this comes from Trevor, do you see the Coyotes making any moves via trade to help block, bolster the lackluster PP? power play and offense. Um, I definitely think this is something they're looking at. They're continually gauging the market and seeing what's available. Um, but I think a lot of the changes and improvement is going to have to come in-house. Obviously, Mike Ribeiro was brought in um, in the offseason to help that. And I think we're seeing that lately. He's helped, um, obviously, with the power play goal last night. He's had a few assists before that that were on the power play. But it still is a work in progress. And I think that's just to be expected because this is a new philosophy. Newell Brown has come in and really changed the mindset on the PP. Um, Ribeiro style is different. Um, you know, a lot of guys just kind of have their set places and, and that's what we've been used to. The Ekman Larson and Yandel at the point, Hansel in front of the net, and everyone else just kind of scatters after that. But um, Ribeiro is very flexible. He likes to be on the half wall, but he'll row 
you know, to find the best play. And I think it's taking some time for chemistry to develop, and, and that trickles into the line as well. Um, but they are definitely looking for upgrades. They always are. And I think they're looking to find another top six forward, but that comes sometimes with a steep price tag, and, and um, you know, we'll see how much flexibility they have with their budget to do that. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for your questions. Sorry we didn't get to all of them, um, but we're back doing this next Wednesday. We're doing this every Wednesday on AZ Central Sports, so follow along. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at AZC underscore McCollin and AZC Sports um, for all your Coyotes updates. So we'll see you next time.